We go on to the next talk by Dr. Uh, I invite Dr. V. R. Sharavanan to put forth his views on temporal relaxing retinectomy in refractory macular holes. Dr. Sharavanan is a senior consultant in Arvind Eye Hospital, Coimbatore. Thank you, madam. Thank you. So uh, a lot of times we see that, uh, I'll discuss in the previous talks also, uh, myopic macular holes are a little bit uh, refractory to closure and also uh, they can lead to detachment unlike other macular holes where they just remain open. Sometimes because of the stiffness of the retina, it can lead to a retinal detachment also. So just presenting two cases, uh, this is a, a one-eyed lady who had under, already undergone scleral buckling surgery uh, 20 years back. Another is she's lost because of old RD and thysis. And uh, she developed a uh, re-RD and she underwent primary vitrectomy for the closure, uh, for the detachment and she had a macular hole also, but uh, this is the uh, uh, previous uh, preoperative OCT. But after the vitrectomy, you can see that the, the staphyloma, you can see the large uh, detachment there and the whole macular hole also is not closed. And there's a recurrent retinal detachment in spite of oil being inside. And you can see there is some thinning in the uh, edge of the staphyloma also. So we tried, I wanted to uh, do a sort of a relaxed retina so that you can sort of, uh, the retina will conform to the curvature of the uh, staphyloma. Ideally, what should have been done is a macular buckle, but because of absence of EC buckles in India, T buckles a little bit difficult to place also, not very well versed in buckling, macular buckling also. So that is one of the reasons why we are trying to go for an internal approach here. You can see the large macular hole and the extremely thin retina at the edge of the uh, staphyloma. So uh, after removing the oil, I'm just uh, trying to do a, uh, uh, in, in, because the RD was extending inferior also, I just wanted to re release the inferior retina also to prevent any uh, contraction of the po uh, inferior vitreous base and re-RD again, second re-RD. Here I was trying to peel the ILM, but the ILM was very thin and I was getting a few bits and pieces. I was not able to get, uh, my original intention was to do only ILM, inverse ILM flap for the re relaxing retinectomy, but uh, I was not able to get a proper uh, flap, it was very thin and it was not able to uh, get it in a single sheet. So whatever less I could get, I was not, was not sufficient to close the la large macular hole. So I went for a large, uh, I went for a, 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 a autograft, retinal autograft. I just harvested the retina from the um, uh, inferior relaxing retinal malady had run. I just, from the edge, I harvested a, with the vertical scissors. I just harvested a small piece of uh, retina and under PFCL dragged and placed it on the uh, macular hole and just in, tried to insert the edges under the edge of the macular hole. And we, I did a temporal retinectomy also to allow the retina to sort of intentionally slip so that this will help to conform the retina to the large staphylometer zone. And the laser to the uh, retinotomy. And you can see this is the uh, post-operative picture and after almost you now one year after silicon oil removal, you can see the uh, attached retina with almost 618 vision even though the foveal area has some scars, somehow she still has good vision. And this is the whole area of relaxing retinectomy. The inferior retina to prevent recurrent RD because of the vitreous base contracture. And the temporal retinectomy was mainly to allow the retina to slip into the uh, staphyloma to create an international retinal slippage, which you normally see in a uh, GRT surgery. This is the post-operative picture. You can see the central tissue there, which, uh, which is uh, uh, at the base of the staphyloma. And she has quite good vision in, uh, after silicone removal also. There's one more case uh, where the patient developed a recurrent RD under oil I said after a silicon oil removal, and I could not make out any any uh, break other than the macular hole. And this is a post SOR recurrent RD in a high myopic patient with the open macular hole. So I assumed macular hole is the cause of detachment in this patient. And again, I can see uh, here I was able to successfully harvest the ILM. So I did an inverse ILM flap, and I went on to do the uh, temporal retinectomy. Again, I mainly I do inferior retinectomy to prevent uh, vitreous based contracture to uh, leading to uh, repeated RD. And the whole uh, temporal almost uh, going for almost uh, close to more, uh, uh, 180 plus around a little bit of inferior around 200 uh, degrees of uh, relaxing, uh, relaxing the retina. And then this led to successful closure of the hole as well as the attachment of the retina. So you can, you can see that the, there are multiple tractional forces in, at play in uh, um, high myopia. The anterior posterior traction from the vitreous as well as the bowing of the sclera creating anterior tractional forces and from the periphery, both for the sciatic vitreous and the internal limiting membrane. So ideal solution would be to put a macular buckle because of absence of EC buckles in India. That's one of the big lacunae here. And this is one of the uh, studies where they did uh, attached retina with the refractory myopic macular holes. They did a localized retinectomy around two disc areas from the fovea to create internal retinal slippage to conform. 
and uh, attach the uh, macular hole, uh, close the macular hole. And this is just an animation showing what we are doing here. This is staphyloma, and we do a retinectomy in the per temporal periphery so that the retina can intentionally slip and conform to the posterior curvature. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharunan, sir.